Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent study that might have discovered the first ever sign of what seems to be some kind of an ancient supernova that may have happened in what's known as extragalactic or intergalactic space. Somewhere on the outskirts of the nearby galaxies, Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud. And if confirmed, would represent an extremely interesting discovery because we don't generally expect supernova to occur away from certain regions of the galaxy, requiring some kind of an unusual exotic explanation. And so let's talk a little bit more about this particular discovery and what the scientists using various Australian radio telescopes discovered in the last few years and why we're actually able to see so many different new mysteries across the universe because of these various telescopes that have become so extremely powerful that they're able to see things we've never been able to see before. With all of this connecting to that other mystery, the mystery of orcs or odd radio circles that we've discussed in one of the previous videos you can find right there or in the description. In that video we've discussed the potential explanation and the new discoveries in regards to these very strange formations across the universe. These very peculiar objects that seem to be millions of light years across, but seem to be only visible in radio light. They don't produce any x-rays, they don't produce any infrared light, they don't produce any optical light. And so since their original discovery a couple of years ago, they've been simply referred to as odd radio circles. Discovered by a network of very powerful telescopes such as the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder and later confirmed by other telescopes such as the South African Meerkat. With the telescopes eventually establishing that, well, these very distant orcs for the most part seem to be sort of centered around very distant galaxies which might have produced extremely powerful explosions for one reason or another. Their actual origin is still not entirely clear, but what's clear is that these objects are really huge and most of them generally have some sort of a galaxy right at the center which very likely produced them. But not all orcs were created equally. As a matter of fact, several orcs discovered in the last year or so, such as of course the one in this study, did not really have anything in their center, and to some extent also possessed slightly different features, with some of them also being in the middle of nowhere next to pretty much nothing, which naturally presented a bit of a new mystery. It meant that certain orcs, certain odd radio circles, were even odder, or basically represented an entirely different way of producing similar objects. Which is precisely what this new study by the same scientists behind the orc study decided to tackle and wanted to find out exactly what some of these other orcs represent. And since one of the original explanations in regards to orcs involved various supernova which normally do produce these spherical or somewhat circular formations which sometimes can also have a lot of radio emissions coming from within them, the scientists in this case wanted to find out if it was possible for at least some of these orcs, the ones without anything in the middle, to be supernova remnants. With this object right here being particularly interesting for at least two more reasons. First of all, it seemed to have a very unusual flat radio spectral index, suggesting that it might have had slightly different origin. Basically its radio frequency was a little bit different. And secondly, compared to other orcs, it actually appeared to be larger, which suggested that it could have been much closer to us than anything else we've seen so far. But trying to understand how this object was created and what exactly it represented was very difficult for one simple reason. It didn't seem to have anything next to it and it didn't have anything in the middle. As you can see from this image, it seems to be pretty much completely isolated by itself. And at least in terms of appearances, potentially being somewhere between the Large Magellanic Cloud and the galactic plane of the Milky Way galaxy. So somewhere right here in the region you see on the screen. Possibly in the middle and possibly a little bit closer to the Large Magellanic Cloud. But because it's kind of difficult to judge distances in space, especially if there is no other indication or no other representation from other frequencies, in this case the scientists were sort of at a loss on how to approach this. So basically they decided to make all of the potential propositions of what could create this object and then reject these propositions one by one based on what they were seeing. So first of all, because there was no galaxy in the middle, this was unlikely to be a typical odd radio circle like the ones we've seen and talked about before. It was also unlikely to be some kind of a gigantic star flare or any other star emission simply because it would probably produce other radiation as well. And it was probably not a quasar or microquasar 
or a distant active galactic nucleus or any other powerful galaxy simply because it didn't really produce X-rays and gamma rays either. So once again, in this case, something else must have been happening in this particular region. With basically the only logical explanation left to the scientists being a supernova remnant, because we know that they do produce relatively circular formations and they can produce a lot of radio light. With certain types of remnants potentially only visible in radio light as well. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at a typical radio map of the Milky Way galaxy, you would actually see quite a lot of various circular objects across the galactic plane. And every single one of these galactic circles is a remnant from a supernova. And the majority of them are not visible in other frequencies. Nothing in the visible light, nothing in the gamma rays, and only some of them are visible in X-ray. Suggesting, of course, that certain supernova, in theory, could produce radio emissions only and could produce these very large radio circles. But the problem in this case is that normally we expect supernova to happen only in certain regions of space. For example, in very large, very massive molecular clouds. Or other regions of space with very powerful, very massive stars. Maybe certain globular clusters or various regions of space with potentially really massive stars. A lot of starburst regions. But these regions never exist between galaxies. They're never in the intergalactic space. So how exactly did a supernova happen here? Well, in this case, the scientists believe that there might have been actually some kind of a star, or potentially a binary star system, residing in the Large Magellanic Cloud. And this star system, which very likely had two stars that were slightly different in mass, most likely had two stars with a lot of interaction between one another. First, one of the stars very likely lost its outer shell and turned into a white dwarf. Then, sometime later, the other star also started doing the same with eventually both of these stars becoming orbiting white dwarfs that started to come closer and closer to one another until one day they basically collided, reaching the Chandrasekhar limit and exploding as a Type 1a supernova. Although more specifically, this is actually known as the Single Degenerate Progenitor Supernova, with the event itself occurring at a relatively far away distance between galaxies. Now, why exactly these stars were so far away from the Large Magellanic Cloud and from the Milky Way is not really a question we can answer. But stars do get kicked out of various regions in the galaxy all the time. With the actual explosion happening anywhere from about 2200 to possibly about 7000 years ago, with the remnant itself already being approximately 155 light years across, making this a really large supernova remnant. Which would also explain why we don't really detect many other frequencies from it, simply because it's already sort of disappearing into nothingness. And although normally a lot of supernova remnants are not as perfectly circularly shaped, some are, such as the iconic SN1987A that's also located right in the middle of the Large Magellanic Cloud Galaxy. So it actually would not be unusual for a supernova to have a somewhat circular shape and have all of the features detected from this particular object as well. And, if confirmed, this would be an extremely important discovery. It would be the first intergalactic supernova remnant, and it would also be the first explanation for an odd radio circle formed as a result of an ancient supernova, while also potentially helping us discover what happens in between galaxies when supernova occur. Because typically, in a normal galaxy, when a supernova does happen, there is quite a lot of density inside the actual galaxy to prevent the supernova from expanding too fast, which often results in very typical supernova shapes that we see pretty much everywhere. But in this case, because this is in between galaxies, this would maybe explain why the shape is a lot more perfectly circular, simply because there is just not enough gas between galaxies to deflect or to stop the propagation of matter from the exploded star. And also, it's not entirely clear if there's anything in the middle and if anything was left behind, such as, for example, a neutron star. And so at this point, it's still a pretty interesting discovery and still a pretty unique mystery. But chances are that it is actually a supernova remnant and the first supernova remnant found between galaxies. And so once we discover something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful personal t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.